Hi, welcome to SBR Videos. I'm Peter Loshak. It's week nine in the NFL in St. Louis and Minnesota is uh, one of the more interesting matchups that uh, we've seen, I think, uh, so far this year. And we're going to talk with Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com to try to make heads or tails of it. Joe Duffy, uh, Minnesota's a two and a half point home favorite. The total is 39 and a half. That's down a bit from the uh, opener that I saw of 40, which makes a lot of sense. But Pinnacle and the Greek are both still hanging 40, which might be kind of telling. Obviously, two premier huge running backs here, Adrian Peterson and, and Todd Gurley. And, uh, you know, St. Louis, the defense is awesome. They, uh, they got their big win, though, last week by virtue of, of some big plays, which are, I don't think we can reliably think are going to happen, assume are going to happen uh, week in, week out. And of course, Minnesota came back. You know, they were down late, and they, and they came from behind, got 10 late points, which, uh, which shows incredible poise and incredible character. It also shows that, uh, you know, they're not the kind of team that's going to necessarily be reliable to blow people out. Now, the market is definitely underestimating them, though, right? They're 5-2 and two straight up and 6-1 and one against the spread. So you want to be very careful if you're going to bet against Minnesota. My first thought on this game is maybe St. Louis on a tease would be a good play here. What do you have to say about the side and or the total in this game, Joe? I think it's a little bit difficult here, Peter. Yeah, there, I mean, obviously, I can explain all the reasons why the total is so low. And, you know, first glance, you would say the under. But again, the total is so daggone low that yeah. all you have to do is have one or two big plays. And all of a sudden, that could make the uh, the under a, a pretty bad play. So the, the low total really does scare me there. What I like to do anytime I see something that appears to be counterintuitive, I like to look it up and see how teams have done under those circumstances. And uh, again, one of my golden rules is use the odds makers' knowledge against them. I'll admit this isn't necessarily a classic example, but you have Minnesota. They are perfect at home straight up. And you got St. Louis that has lost two of the three road games. And when you have a home team with a home winning percentage that is 0. .650, better than their opponent's uh, away winning percentage, and of course, it's validated by the fact that it's game seven or, left, uh, or later, and the line is less than a normal home field advantage. That is, it's less than minus three for the uh, for the home team going with the road team under those circumstances is 21 and nine so again counterintuitive if you look at the home road splits you would say minnesota's a lock but history says they're actually not a lock and why is it because the vikings they haven't had a very good schedule the, the teams they've beaten a combined eight and 23 straight up 25th toughest schedule in the nfl compared to the rams at 13 so that's why the line isn't higher than maybe the pure uh, straight up marks would dictate and of course what i always say straight up records are the single most overrated when it comes to handicapping but there's where you can find some value in exploiting deceptive records but again i expect it to be a low scoring game but obviously some of the odds makers so i'm a little bit nervous about the total i would probably still lean towards the under but I think I'm going to pass and let Peter Loshak make the pick. All right. My first thought is uh, on this one is it's probably going to be a close game, right? Minnesota pulls out wins, but they don't. Although they have gotten a bunch of you know t wins in the ten point range, but uh, my sense is probably going to be a close game. Uh, what about just you know teasing St. Louis and throwing them in with a bunch of other uh, sides that you might like as a teaser and, and get good value there? You know, I have to admit, all these years that I've been betting, I was told by a Sharpie early. In fact, really, my first boss, Mickey Charles, when I used to listen to him on the radio, he would say there's a reason they call it a tease. I just, I'm just, i just not a big teaser guy, So, but if you're a big teaser guy, I'm not going to talk you out of it. All right, so it's going to be a pass for Joe Duffy. And I'll tell you what, when I was first uh, looking at this game, uh, the obvious you know, first thought is the under, right? I loved St. Louis on the under last week. That one cash. Minnesota is, uh, has gone under in six of their seven games. St. Louis has gone under in five of their seven games. Now it's down to 39 and a half. But then I started thinking, you know, there's going to be a lot of running, but also, you know, big plays, as you said, easily, you know, Gurley and Peterson could easily uh, – pop off a, you know, a 70-yard touchdown run each in this game, could easily see it being, you know, low scoring in the first half, then one way or another, the points start building up in the second half. And then I saw that Pinney and Greek are both still hanging 40. I'm actually thinking that maybe over 39 and a half might be a sneaky good play here. What do you think about that, Joe? It's a possibility. One thing that really worries me is because if you look at these statistics, and I say the most important statistics are yards per rush, yards per pass, and yards per play relative to what their opponent normally allows on offense or gets when you're talking about your defensive statistics. And the matchups both say that both of these teams are much better running than passing, and both of these teams are better stopping the pass than the run. So I don't really think that, you know, it wouldn't make sense for either coach to get a little cute and maybe uh, speed things up and pass the ball a little bit more than expected. But, yeah. again, the only reason I would like the over is because, as you said, the total is just so daggone low. And years ago, I used to almost – 
you know, if you bet every low total over and every high total under, that was like taking candy from a baby. But unfortunately, those days are gone anyway. Yeah, and I was reading that uh, Jeff Fisher's looking to uh, improve the offense as well. I'll tell you what, Joe Duffy from OffshoreInsiders.com, it's going to officially be a pass for you, but I think I'm going to take a shot with the over at 39 and a half. Interesting analysis, Joe. Thanks so much for your thoughts, and of course, your, uh, your strong plays go every week at your website, OffshoreInsiders.com. Tell us about that. Yeah, literally every single sport. We close out baseball strong, even got a break in that final game uh, with both Kansas City and the over. Uh, you pick the sport I'm sizzling hot in, even some NHL picks, but mostly football and basketball, college basketball around the corner. Visit offshoreinsiders.com. A ton of big plays already up for this week, and I know I got a ton of check marks, but we're hot in, in everything, both uh, recently and over the last 28 years. Joe Duffy's picks at offshoreinsiders.com. Thanks, Joe. Thank you, Peter.